Rugby League is back. Drum roll, please. You're a true Warriors fan. I have no recollection of that one, no. We don't all have to agree. It's good to be back. It's just a really boring thing. Oh, partner. Start winning some games. <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of changes to the team. I've got them uh, making the eight for mine. Let's go. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Advantage Line, TAB's Rugby League betting podcast. My name is Carl Tiley. That is Paul Mawate. Paul, another magic weekend for Kiwi Rugby League fans. Look, Carl, I, I think this calls for a, I guess, a recognition of the, the courage, the guts, the determination shown by a, a Warriors team uh, that had been decimated um, by injuries. Um, and I think it's the first time in NRL history that so much has been owed by so many to so few. And I salute you, Warriors. Wow, that's heavy. That's heavy. Um, I'm going to kick it across to uh, a guest of ours because I don't really know where to go after that. Nick Tedeschi, welcome in, Teddy. How are you? Uh, I'm up and about, but I, I wasn't sure whether that was dedicated to the Warriors or to my referee, Liam Kennedy, who certainly helped, uh, helped get the wires over the line there for uh, zero penalties for the, for, against the Warriors. It was, uh, I, I, yeah, they've, they've, they've broken new ground as being the most disciplined team in rugby league history, so well done, New Zealand. Yeah, I think we've just broken new ground there with Teddy bagging an official only one and a half minutes into the forecast. <laughs> That is the, I reckon just, I can top that as well, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and that's enough from Ted for now. We will go to uh, our other guest, former Warrior, uh, now commentator with SENZ, Blake Ashford. Ash, where does that rank in terms of Warriors wins for you? Um, probably the best, in my opinion. Um, I think after last week, the Penrith game was the best, and now going forward for these injuries, we've just won up to it. So, look, Carl, you and I have the... Uh, the beanies on and i think as the the months go on we'll start to see a cool runnings effect where you know the doubters start taking their jackets off start revealing the warriors jersey underneath so probably be paul next then i'll say we'll get teddy at the end of the year oh, <laughs> the day we see teddy in a warriors beanie that there might be a they might just I'm a, very pragmatic man. I'm a very pragmatic man, Carl. As soon as the Warriors start winning me some cash on the punt, I can start wearing Warriors beanies. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I, hold, I hold nothing personally against the Warriors. I like every other team. If, if I can start finding them to win, <laughs> the beanie can, can come on. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, just on the, I guess, the cool runnings effect there, Blake, the Warriors have sold out their next two home games already. They've said eight eight home games sold out through the course of the season so far. If I know Warriors fans, that, that, that Tigers, Eels, Dogs games, they're immoral to be sold out. Has anyone, any team ever sold out every single home game in a season? Surely not. No, I, I, I couldn't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I dare, I'll go out on a limb and say, I don't think they would have. Um, you know, teams go up and down. Even with the Warriors losing the game this year and they've still sold games out. So... Look, I mean, um, this could be a first that we're seeing. And I did see somewhere the other week that, oh, sorry, this week, that it's going to be 10 years until there's another New Zealand team. I mean, they're definitely pushing their case forward with uh, sold-out crowds and rugby league taking over. Teddy, have you got any official knowings in terms of uh, sellouts? Uh, no, I imagine the Broncos back in the early days and Newcastle maybe during the heyday could, could compete with it. But it's amazing stuff. And you've got to remember, like, they are two absolute rugby league heartlands. And, you know, New Zealand for all it is has never has always been kind of union first. So it's been – it's one for it. It's, and that kind of stuff is even getting kind of popular press over in Australia in terms of the sellout crowds, the what they've – they've done for the fan experience there, the kind of walk onto the ground, all that kind of stuff. It's very real, uh, a real positive story. And you're getting a lot of, not so much, I would say, kind of adoration of the Warriors, but more uh, a kind of 
respect and excitement around the Warriors. Like, playing the Warriors used to be one of those games, probably like playing the Tigers now or playing the Dragons. You'd be like, that's a game on the schedule. We're not getting excited about it. Now, going across to New Zealand to play the Warriors, that's a bloody exciting game. You know, and, and people are up and about because of that. And I think from a, you know, Maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm, I'm I'm stretching this a bit too far, but you've got to think that that's going to be good for New Zealand tourism and good for Auckland over the coming years. Getting, yeah, you know, making that the annual road trip. Like I know my son and I are talking about coming across to watch the Bulldogs next year in in, in Auckland, which will be the first time in a while. So um, all that kind of stuff is just like really exciting because people want to be part of the experience. And there's to me, there's no there's no better atmosphere in rugby league at the moment than what you get at Mount Smart. What border patrol on what jelly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just have to have a word to the New Zealand Tax Department and a few other organisations before getting back in. <laughs> look, look at this deplorable bloke. He's using his kid to get stuff through customs. It's unbelievable. But music to Teddy's ears would be that the Blues are currently top of the table in Super Rugby and they're struggling to get uh, punters to Eden Park. Um, and well, I know Carl was a stupid game, Paul. That's not surprising. When it turns out Carl, stupid, stupid Carl was at the Dolphins game, and I was watching it on telly, and you could feel the atmosphere. Uh, I thought through the town. The, the, there's one thing the Warriors crowd does, and they get stuck into the game. They really become a part of the action. Well, you, you and they I can influence, they can even influence referees, Paul. Oh, shut up! Here we shut go. up! <laughs> you and I have been lucky enough to go to quite a few games in the last couple of years and being abroad in wild fever. But honestly, that that crowd, like you'll be able to back me up here, I reckon, that crowd on Sunday was up there with the most electric and passionate I've felt in the last, you know, 12, 18 months for the Warriors and genuinely got them over the line, I think. I 100% agree, especially in those conditions. Like they play a, fa- a factor. Like it was wet, it was windy, it was not nice to even go out there and play at that time, six o'clock on a Sunday, uh, in the cold. But the fans turned out, and it was good to see as well. They they sort of do have their favourites, but you could tell every time someone would take a hit up from the back fence, like you had a bunty. Marata's first carry back, the crowd went off. Jazz was there, like everyone was running and everyone was up, and it sort of kept them in that game. Um, in that first half, I believe. And then, like you said, got them home in the end. Huge. A, a wonderfully disciplined display by the Wars last Saturday. So Good refereeing. There was, there was really no opportunity for the referee to award a penalty against the Wars, So, Just on the ref, that, uh, the, the kick defusal before half-time, it was a try, wasn't it? Well, uh, go on, mate. Well, just in our earpiece when we're up there in the commentary box, I don't know, you might have heard it, but he said that he clearly came down with it and diffused it. So in my eyes, that's I think I got in trouble on air because I might have swore. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully it hasn't come out. I might just let it out then. But what happened, like he – usually they just award the try and then go up to the bunker and then we'll see it. if he. But he obviously clearly thought he saw him diffusing the bomb. So I think – I don't know whether Marcelo touched it. He might have touched it, so I'm not saying it's a try. But to just automatically go out to the 20, that was, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to use the language, but, yeah, it was it was rubbish. It was complete rubbish. Like, there was no way he caught the ball. Like, absolutely no way he caught the ball. I, I, think, I think Marcelo knocked it on. I don't think it was a try, but it certainly deserved greater scrutiny than what was, <laughs> than what was being given to it because – the number of times they go up and like what really grinds me is when they go up and they know it's going to try just to look at the set restart. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no one's got it down. We're just going to have a quick look at this just to make sure we get it right. And then you get something like that. It could be a four-pointer and they don't go up for it. That to me was, was ridiculous. And, you know, I've been making fun of my referee and Kenny at the start, but the difference between those lower tier refs and the top, and the top ones in allowing stuff like that to happen is really bad. And you kind of see that with uh, three or four of them are just – miss these obvious glaring situations that just require greater scrutiny. Just take the time. No one really worries about if they take if an extra minute's taken to get something like that right. And that that deserved getting right. Yep. All right. Um let's move on to divided opinion. We've started the show with the Hassan and Raw and I've got a feeling it's about to get a little bit more heated. Before we get to the question Last week, we talked Origin Bolters. 
I've listened back and by gosh, we were off the mark. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna play something here, and then we will, we will talk divided opinion. Dollar ten, it's Teddy. Oh, there's, there's a bit of everyone in here. Origin bolters. We briefly touched on Origin before. Give me a couple of names, Ted. Who your biggest bolters are for Origin, or biggest shocks, I guess. Uh, bolters. I am going with Tom Hazel, uh, Terrell May, uh, Ted Wilton. And I'm, he's probably not bolter now. He's probably he's pretty, pretty close to a certain now. Matt Burton is like that. Ben Hunt, fourteen. I wouldn't have Ben Hunt at fourteen. I'd have Dean at fourteen, but. Queensland don't work like that. So Queensland are one hundred percent picking Ben Hunt. So. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ben Hunt slot into the seven. I thought that Hazelton chat that Teddy was throwing out before. I think they'll go with Dearden. Ezra Mam would be a great option as well. I think they're just so set on those two hookers and that combination that works so well for the okay, And I was just saying, I think Dearden epitomizes Queensland spirit, whatever that is. But New South Wales are going to pump you anyway, so it doesn't matter. Few, uh, few buzzes there. Oh, no, the well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Carl. I'm not sure that the buzzes are for us, though. I think the buzzes might be from Michael Maguire, just quietly. <laughs> well, the question for divided opinion this week, and I'll go to you first, Ted. The New South Wales team is so left field that it might be just what they need to win. Uh so I, I'm all for changing the changing the team when necessary. Like I, I get that. Like it's a new coach, it's a new era. You bring in your own team. I, 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 I'm fully on board the philosophy of that. If the team he selected was unhinged, I would be getting Michael Maguire some mental health counselling, and I'd be looking at. I'd be, I'd be seriously looking at his at, at his fitness and well-being to be able to coach the second game. Some of those selections were like absolutely bonkers. Like, <laughs> it, 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 like the Edward Sesco one, fine. Like it's sad for Teddy. Like, I would have gone Teddy, but, like, that's a close run thing. Like, Burton should have been 5-8, I get that. But, you you know, you can make case of the life. Like, those yeah, ones are... always been ones. playing well. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Coruscant not being there for Reese Robson is absolutely off this bar. Uh, the police, New South Wales police should have been around the Michael Maguire's house and arrested him. So <laughs> that was absolutely stupid. And then to not only do that, to double up with having Cameron McInnes, who is exactly the same player as Reese Robson, they are identical players, and then start Cameron McInnes ahead of Isaiah Yo off the map. Maybe one prop, one prop. That is absolutely insane. One prop. We've got paying us. We have a bunch of slow, white, hardworking middles. Is what we have. So we are essentially trying to build a team around Tony Grimaldi and Alan Tung. Uh, if if, if Michael Maguire was coached, that's exactly what would have happened in the time. But having no cover for backs on the bench in an era where the, the stats are pretty highly pointed towards you need to have a back on the bench to, to cover and to have Matt Burton there and not be anywhere except for 18th man. And we'll talk about 18th man not being able to play for your club later down the line. Absolutely ballistic. And to let a rugby loving just quite a flog like Joseph Swalley play when there are far better options, including Matt Burton, uh, Tony Staggs, Jesse Rowe. There is a list as long as your arm of players who were better in, in that side than, than, than what Michael Maguire picked. Uh, honestly, and how's Zach Lomax kept his spot uh, after the last performances of the last two weeks over someone like a Josh Adekar? Crazy. And maybe one of the most crazy of all, Latrell Mitchell not being there after the game he had on the weekend. And what he's done in Origin, and to say he was publicly available, and my word out of South is he was not he was not picked because he wouldn't go for a coffee with Michael McGuire last week. Like absolute madness. I I've never been death riding New South Wales more in my life because this is an abhorrent team. <laughs> he's probably concerned he might see Braith and Esther at the at the cafe. <laughs> oh jeez. Wow. What do you think, Teddy? <laughs> um, I was going to say. <laughs> Is Madge, is Madge the magician or is he the madman? And and I think we know what camp Teddy sits in at the moment. Um, to be fair, I've got to agree with Teddy on a number of those um, very, very strange selections that Madge has made. Um, but, you know, I can't believe that Latrell Mitchell's not there either. I remember him and Tommy T absolutely tore Queensland apart. What was it about... Um, three three seasons ago um 
this uh, our New South Wales trying to do a Queensland on Queensland, and I don't think it. I don't think they are. I just yeah, that one prop is the big thing. One prop there. The, Payne Hart is going to have to an absolute monster of a game. He's going to have to play big, big minutes as well. Um, and if they have one injury in the back line, they're in a bit of trouble there. Should we throw to a man who yeah. actually played the game? Yeah, um, played, played New South Wales under under 12s, under 16s? <laughs> yeah, under 12s. <laughs> um, well, you want to divide an opinion, you're going to get it, Carl. I... Actually, before the teams were picked, I gave New South Wales no chance. But the team he has actually picked, I can run with it and see the method in the madness. Now, bear with me for a sec. Isaiah Yo is that ball-playing lock. What New South Wales have been doing over the last so many series is trying to shift the ball. They've got Cleary out the back of Isaiah Yo. I can see all this. Uppy Coruscant at dummy half is a really deceptive hooker who likes to play a lot and play with the markers before giving the ball to the forwards. Obviously, what Michael Maguire has gone in, Reese Robson, is someone who's going to make his tackles, is a hard worker, but he will give it straight to, obviously, Payne Haas, as you alluded, just a prop. But I believe Ola Kawatu or Isaiah Yeo will come on and do that same role. There won't be too much ball playing. I think they'll be playing flat and fast, so trying to beat down the door of Queensland. And when you think back to a Sharks team, you don't really have a Cam McGuinness ball playing. Most of it's coming off the halves. Last couple of weeks, Penrith have been looking good when Jerome Luai has been getting the ball one off the ruck and been playing. Nico Hines does that all the time. I just think this is a resemblance of sort of Madge as a person. He's He's a tough bastard, and a lot of these players won't let you down. The concern for me is the age gap. Uh, average, like if you take out the oldest three of each team, you've got almost a two, three year age gap. Um, so Queensland will probably be dominant for longer. But I just look at the the teams. Queensland's once again picked on loyalty because all their players, they're not in form. You can't tell me they've got most of their teams in teams that are down the bottom of the ladder. They're not in form. The New South Wales team has been picked on form. I just think, look, Burton, I can run with. He could have been a six because he's kicking option. With Sua Lee, I can understand, yep, I can understand Mitchell coming in. The biggest one for me is not having a Mitch Barnett on the bench instead of Spencer Lenu. Now, for me, Spencer Lenu's played three, four games all year. He's probably played 20 minutes, 20 minute stretches. You've got a bloke here who will play front row, back row, do anything you want um, for you. Probably die for you if you want Mitch Barnett, who's been doing that for the Warriors. I think he needs to be promoted into the team instead of Spencer Lenu. Um, but look, there there are questions around it. But before the team was named, I would have gone Queensland three 0 because of all the injuries. With this, I actually give New South Wales a chance to win the series. If we win the series, Blake, it'll be on the back of two zero all draws and a one nil win because I I don't see where we're getting a single point from with a team we've named. Well, I can I can see the aerial assault of Lomax and Sort of Lee on one side. You've got the brilliance of Crichton. You've got Payne Haas knocking the door down. With Cam it's, hard put, it's hard to put a bomb up from your own 30, though, Blake, when uh, we've got no forwards to go forward. <laughs> oh, this is so where does Ruben, Ruben Cotter? He's a big... Does he usually play lock for the Cowboys? Yep. So that's a lock playing front row. So Lindsay Collins, the only front row there. You've got Nanai, a back row with Sua, Carrigan. You've got Foto Aker on the bench, who's another prop. That's all they've got who play prop on the weekend. So... When you look at the teams, there's really two props named in the 17 for New South Wales, two props named for Queensland that are playing there on the weekend. So, but they've I mean, got they've got they've got middles like Carrigan and yep. um uh um you Connor as well on the bench who Connor was starting who are regular meter readers who are regularly kind of up around that 120. Cameron McInnes is in that player. Like Cameron McInnes is in that player. Like, hey, no, I'm I'm not against Cameron. I have Cameron McInnes in my team. I have Cameron McInnes on the bench. Coming on doing a hard working role, coming on ready replacing a chorus out for, for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Like, no issue with your better. I just think we have a bunch of like hard working players, but there's just not a lot of there's just not a lot of go for in it. Like someone like a Hudson Young isn't a meter reader, and he's a like, a very good player. I don't understand what the point of having someone like a Hudson Young on the bench is. Like you either play Hudson Young 
what you don't like. If you look, I would rather see Mitch Barnett on the bench instead of Hudson Young because Hudson Young is an 80 minute player who you're going to get your 80 minutes on. Keenan is quite the same player. So if you pick one of them and you, you go like the other quiet on the bench, totally on board with. Like he's 100%, he's a, a good selection. I don't understand why Mitch Barnett or Teague Wilton wouldn't have been there ahead of uh, um, the Hudson Young. I, and I would, the only thing I'd change with the New South Wales team, and I'm being completely honest, I'd put Matt Burton and Mitch Barnett in for Spencer Lenu and Hudson Young. They're the only changes I'd make to the team, and I'd be happy with it. I'm happy with this team, apart from those two on the bench, and I think they can do a job, especially game one in Sydney. But Queensland to win 3 0, $4.80. Queensland to win the series 3 0. Four dollars and eighty. The problem with the problem with that is, Paul, is Queensland are often very smart. When they're already wrapped the series up two 0 they often tank that last game just to make them seem like they're going to be underdogs next year. So just be aware of that one, Paul. <laughs> Three 0 is what only happened twice since the year two thousand. Yeah. yeah, very rare. All right, good start. Yeah. On fire here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't even need. We'll just move on. Um, have you got the betting results from last week? Oh, righty ho. Here we go. Shall we start with Blake? Yeah, we'll start with Blake. Um, Blake uh, did not have a win last week. He had two multis. He had the uh, Roosters minus three and a half into the Bronx minus five and a half into the Bulldogs head to head. Uh, And then he had another multi, uh, Waz one to 12 into the Panthers one to 12. Um, So no dice there, down 100, down 335.30 for the season so far. And I'm happy to announce he's the only one in the negative out of the teams. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, We'll go to Surly. Surly had a win and a loss. A nice one, actually. He had the Panthers plus 13 and a half, Manly plus 13 and a half, the Wars to win and the Bulldogs to win. Um, Had $90 on that. Uh, and then he had the Waz one to twelve, nice. Souths minus two and a half. And then he had a duo, Mariner and Walsh, uh, Walsh to combine for two or more tries. Unfortunately, uh, Walsh couldn't help Mariner out there. And he only, also had only, only, two- only seventy points in that game, though, Paul. So a little bit sticking up. <laughs> <laughs> how how Walsh didn't score a, a try <laughs> in a game that was just fair and can flowing. Um, yes, anyway, and he also, of course, had Murray Tuilangi, who he saw down at the bar, didn't he, every single time uh, during <laughs> at the same hotel. So that didn't come in, but uh, he's up $291.13 for the season. What was he up just that week, last week alone? $370.70. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Nice little collection. He has come back with a bang in the last three weeks, silly. He said he had um, someone else tipping for him, so I think that might be the key there. Yeah, we're going to be an investigation into this. Yeah, congratulations, Kim. Uh, <laughs> the study you've been doing on Cannington Dogs has, has come through. Uh, Carl had three bets. Uh, Titans plus 13 and a half into South. Uh, tick. Uh, Waz one to 12, just as a single. Tick. Uh, and then he had uh, four players to score a try. Uh, Young, Coates, Johnston and DWZ. Uh, no good there. Uh, up $202.50 for the week and up $1,006.36 for the season. Yes, punters. Yes, Carl. Nice, mate. <laughs> uh, Teddy, he had a sweep. Um, he had the Storm into the Raiders plus 11.5, into South into the Titans plus 13.5. Uh, no good. He had under 40.5 in the Cronulla Penrith oh. game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that two points to go up forty two dollars. Real happy with that. Uh into over forty seven and a half in the uh, Bunnies Eels game. So no good there. And then he also had a uh, try scorer. He had a try scoring treble. Um and Xavier Coates let him down because uh, oh, yeah. Johnston scored a try. And how good Tony Francis um dotting down uh, with one well, one shoulder. There. But no good for Teddy. Minus 100 for the week. He is up 192.50 overall. Coming back to the pack. Uh, and I had a couple of bets. I had uh, Valentine Holmes, who was bagged by Teddy last week to score a try. And I had that into Latrell Mitchell, unfortunately. Latrell um, was involved in a number of tries. I just didn't dot down himself. Then I had another multi, South to win. 
over 47 and a half in the Cowboys Tigers game into the Panthers to win. Um, that came in. Uh, I made 306 for the week and I'm now $12.64 to the good. So we're just waiting for a good friend, Blake, to um, join us in the positives. Look, in, in my defense, I think um, those weeks that I was losing, I did tip the Warriors in their losing streak. I went off them, won a couple of weeks, and I went back on them on the weekend. So I'll start to, I'll probably stay away from the Warriors going forward, and I'll get up there. Probably be on top by season's end. It's a man in trouble trying to justify his thoughts. <laughs> uh, tipping wise, had a quick look. Uh, Paul and Teddy hit six. And Blake and I hit five last week. Uh, Teddy has climbed 26 spots into 43rd. I am uh, I climbed 17 spots into 50th. Blake is 66th, and Paul is 210th. Yeah. yeah. And about to and, come and, home and, with, and with, week, with and with a week's advantage there as well. Carl will go yes. Paul. So. That's right. Yeah. Teddy it's, and I started two two in the red. It's but I. To do that, I stopped putting picks in for two or three weeks to help you guys out. So, <laughs> uh, all right, round twelve. We'll just touch on a few of these games. I've got a few headlines here. Dogs touch forty for the first time in eight years. Seventy points ticked up in Townsville. Manly upset the Storm. Roosters run an eight tries to the Raiders three. The Panthers absolutely dominate the Sharks. Bunnies remember how to win. The Titans steal the show at Suncorp. And the Wars run out of reserve grade side and defeat the Dolphins. If you're an overs punter, you uh, were mm. absolutely rejoicing last weekend. Fill up points everywhere. You would have got that. You know, if if uh, Saka had kicked that one at the end, you would have gone eight and zero for the over. Wow. Everything else went over, and that and that, that one missed by a half point. Yeah. Uh, Teddy, what game do you want to touch on? Oh, it'd be remiss of me not to, to discuss the Tall Dogs Dragons game. Um, yeah, obviously, Dogs fans, very, very happy to see Toby Sexton come in halfback uh, with Drew Hutchinson. And it was a real, real turning point. It just really opened up the, the Bulldogs. Dragons, like they can go to water when things go, go awry. And it certainly started to go awry in that second half. But um, turns out all you've got to do is run at Tom Eisenhurst and you can score tries at will. Don't, don't, do your, don't do your boy like that. <laughs> well, he missed some pretty bad tackles on the weekend, let the dogs over, including two on Jamin Salmon. The dogs don't Jamin Salmon. Um, but it was, even when the dogs were good at the back end of the Des Hasler time at Canterbury, they were a very boring team to watch. Canterbury have not been an entertaining team since kind of peak Ben Barber era, stuff like that, probably 12 years ago. And topping 40 points, averaging over 20 points. And yeah, to think how far we've come in two years away from Trent Barrett, uh, away from um, the the mess that we were, it's been great to see. And yeah, they're doing this with, I thought it was a pretty average game the other day, he was carrying an injury. Not just relying on the one one or two people all the time to win on it. Yeah, it wasn't talking about Norwich, and he's probably a step off it. But Gee Jacob Carraz is playing good football. He's playing, positioning himself well, great work rate. Toby's getting the ball early to the, to the back line. Watson Sherry's done doing a lot of stuff that kind of is not not that flash, but off the ball, he's just kind of getting himself in a position, running some great decoys. But he's, he's playing some, some great football there. And your old fella, Josh Curran. I don't know that I'd love to play, come to the dogs since David Stagg hit the dogs in 2009, more than I've, I've come to love Josh Curran. He is unbelievable. I, I, why why, why, why uh, Suella refuses to start him, I do not know. But he just kept stepping out. Like, he was like a madman the other night. He'd be taking two, three hit-ups to set. I couldn't put him down. He's not the biggest fella. He just kept giving his all. So, um, bit of depth to the dogs. Got some talent coming through. Now we're playing a halfback. Great to see Connor Tracy at fullback and not play tap. I mean, things are starting to click in the shape. I don't know that the dogs are, are are going to make the eight, but I think for the first time in a while, I think they're a genuine runner. So I'd say for um, those at Belmore, it's pretty exciting times. I saw a picture of uh, uh, Josh Curran the other day uh, referencing him to the Paddle Pop Lion, and I can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I love he that. He was next to the Fox as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, Blake, what game would you like to touch on? Um, I'll leave the Warriors to you guys. I'm going to go the Panthers and the Sharks. <sighs> now, I assume most of us, are you you can jump on it too, Paulie, if you want, but I, I assume most of us tip the Panthers. I know I did. I just thought they never lose back no. to back. You did never lose back to back. They they're just back to back. They weren't, and plus you've got the Sharks, who everyone's starting to gain respect for after they beat the Storm, they beat the Roosters. That was like a statement game for me, and you could tell from the opening kickoff that Penrith are there to absolutely absolutely destroy a team. Um, the the front rowers, it, it sort of looked like they were would have had a chat during the week and just been like, okay, well they're taking the piss now. Let let's start to ramp it up. So Leo Leota Fisher Harris. The pack was outstanding. Jerome Luai, I mean, if you're a Tigers fan like me, I was questioning, you know, okay, is he going to be good at seven when he comes? He's been outstanding with no Cleary. Even in the Warriors game, he was good. Uh, last week against the Sharks, he was outstanding. Had a, a lot of touches and everything. And almost 30 nil at halftime. I know Nico Hines went out, but even if he stayed in, I think it would have been the same scoreline. He That pack was um, destroying them and... I think they just showed everyone, put everyone still on notice that they are still the team to beat this year. Did the Warriors awaken the beast, Paul? Uh, look, I, I don't think the beast was asleep, to be fair. Um, and, and you look at that Panthers side, and they put 42 points on a shark side uh, at home who were pretty much at full strength. Um, and, and and the Panthers, of course, without Cleary, as you say, uh, Luai um, steps up when Cleary's not there. And I think we've seen the sort of a similar thing with Tamari Martin with Sean Johnson not being there um, the last few weeks. And I hope that that continues for Tamari Martin. I hope that when Sean Johnson comes back, Tamari continues to play that game and take a wee bit more of a, a I guess, a dominant, um, be a do more of a dominant factor and take the ball to the line because it, it gives that... Uh, Warriors offense a wee bit more variety um, but in terms of the Panthers um, the, well I think we saw last week why they're um, three-time defending uh, NRL premiership winners they have a very very good system there and the young fella Cole who came into the halves um, oh, I thought he was very very good um, it just they just keep churning over and they'll have a hiccup every now and then like they did against the Waz um, but overall it's very, they're a very, very hard team to back against. It wasn't okay. two, two orange boys scoring their first NRL try as well, Paulie. Uh, Jack Cole, and Jack Cole? both crossing over. So big day for uh, big day for us out here in the central west. Which game you want to you want to touch on a different game? Are you happy with the uh, Panthers? Oh, I'm happy with it, yeah. I, I'll go back to the Warriors. Um, I couldn't have been more happy and proud after that final whistle like the way the Dolphins rolled down the field in their first or second set and Isako scored in the corner I got those feelings of the Warriors of old I thought oh no we're in trouble here it seemed too easy too fast uh, and then Farnworth got that try sort of not against the run of play but it kind of was um but the Warriors dug in. The Harris to Vita try kind of came from nothing. Tamate Martin scored just on effort alone. Um, and the Warriors were, were up and about. They were dominating that, the second half of that first half. And then out of nowhere, Hammer scored. Farnworth breaks through the line. Hammer scores. I thought, oh, shit, here we go again. But the Warriors, I thought, yeah, they, they were unreal. DWZ at fullback had a massive game. He runs like an absolute lunatic. And it's so good to watch. Um, as you said, Tamari Martin was huge. Barnett was huge. Jazz Tavanga's is playing incredible at the moment. I thought one one of the great wins and, and all those blokes that sort of came in last minute or during the week sort of all stood up and it's so good to watch. Love it. Our was. Our was. <laughs> <laughs> that penny pulley. All right. Let's move on. We've got a little uh, would you rather for you fellas before we get to the grid. What? Yeah. All right. Would you rather 
support a team that has consistent success over a 10 to 20 year period where they make the grand final four or five times, but lose them all or support a team that has relatively no success over that same period, but is guaranteed one grand final win. The level of, you, you, before you answer this, the level of your support for this rules your life. You live and die on the result of every game. Um, you don't know when that grand final's coming. Could be year one, it could be year 20. Teddy, I'll start with you. Uh, look, I, for my entire life, I support Canada, and I was very much that consistently good with the odd premiership popping up. Now, the last seven years, I've done with nothing but absolute garbage. Uh, it's better if I'm going to go consistent. So are you saying they definitely won't win one in 20 years? Or they might, they could win one, but maybe not. I'd say that uh, they they will make four or five and definitely lose those, but they could win others. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Because I don't want to be the West Tigers. They win one and then just generally garbage around it. <laughs> Good segue. Blake, where would you go? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't win, I don't know, because it's sort of changed there. I thought you said you weren't going to win one, but you're going to be in four or five. So, I mean... If you can't win one and you're successful for all those times, um, I wouldn't go that. But if you can just win one and just have an outrageous season and win one, it's something uh, something dreams are made of, Carl. So I'll go uh, I'll go with the one win, still holding on to the as the the boys do at the Tigers, the 2005 title, <laughs> which was memorable. Years ago, so yeah, you've been in that window. <laughs> it does make <laughs> Jerry Taylor this question, if you ask me, Carl. <laughs> Paul? Oh, give me the one premiership. Really? I'll take it every day of the week. I, I don't look back um, over this the... not you personally. You're not getting the ring. No. no. <laughs> Hold on. You said I'm fully invested, though. Yeah, you are, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you look back um, over the last 10 seasons, who cares who the most consistent team was? Yeah. It, it, it only matters if, you, if your name is at the top of the pile at the end of the season. Um, and it well, will Paul's always be right. there. Paul's right. I'm changing my answer. I'm with, I'm with Paul. I don't know. Right. About, I can't believe, this is the first time I've ever convinced Teddy to change his mind. <laughs> this, this is brilliant. Think Mark this down. Do, think about your mental, growth, there is growth there, Paul. There is growth. <laughs> think about your mental health, your, your own well-being. I'm my taking mental health, My mental health is cast anyway, so. As a yeah, I, just want, I, I just want that premiership. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think about all the good years the dog was having that he went premiership. Who cares? I think about 2004 and 95. Carl, but, what about yeah, the that's... Warriors fan? As a Warriors fan, you had no Warriors win yet. Not really yeah, the success I, either. Would you just me, still take just one win? Give me the success, the consistent success and consistent cheering. Like, I've, I've been through the ringer. I can't, like, I would much rather turn up to work on a Monday happy than angry at the world. Fair enough. Oh, give okay. me, give me a premiership. I, I, I want a premiership too. Mm. I want one. <laughs> there's room, there's room under here to get 2024. <laughs> it was a nasty question, Carl. A nasty question. It really requires really, some introspection. I didn't like. I know, and honestly, I wrote it. It was more of a, you know, a self-reflection of myself and sort of where things are at in my head. So it works for everyone. But uh, yeah, just play the grid. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Wasn't it a hard grid this week? Yeah, it was outrageous. I must have spent an hour on the grid, which I never do. Pause the pod Tuesday, 28th of May. Go find the grid and play along. See if you can beat us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You'll definitely beat me. You'll definitely beat me. Across the top has played 100 plus games. Started games at both the wing and back row. This is the Very second cool. time we've had this one. Uh, and played 300 plus games. Down the left, played for the Broncos, Roosters, and Sea Eagles. Teddy, your top row, please. Uh, so the first column was quite easy 100 plus games at the Broncos. Uh, went on my favourites, David Stagg, 0.86. Uh, started game on both the wing and the back row. I couldn't think of anyone other than Corey Oates, so 23.32. And 300-plus games, Corey Parker, 9.30. Okay. Blake? Um, I went uh, the first one, Jordan Kahu, 0 0.67. I was the same as Teddy. I could not think of anyone else but Corey Oates. 
23.32. Then I went um, the journeyman, Darius Boyd, 11.93. I'll go next. Uh, Brain, one of my guys that I uh, try to jam in here as much as possible, WWE star Daniel Vidot. Oh, 0. 0. 100, games. 100 games, wow. He played... For a few clubs. Yeah, just over 100 games. Uh, started game in back row and wing, Greg Eastwood, only because that came up a few weeks ago. Greg Eastwood, wow, the beast. Played one, one game on the wing. Uh, for Canterbury, and, wasn't it? Was no, it? no, for the Broncos. Wayne Bennett started him on the wing one game. <laughs> uh, 300 plus games, Broncos. Teddy, I took your advice. You said last week, think of all possible. People. So, well, I went Darren Lockyer, 7.59. I was going to go Lockyer, but I wasn't sure whether he got his 300 in before, not including the NRL, the 96, 97 stuff. So, sorry, can I, I, didn't I even, so, didn't even, yeah. so, can I? So is it do, do you get less points for someone who's more obvious? Because Lockyer and Oh, Parker, wow. <laughs> me. Do you get the, the, the more current they are, the less, the, the more points you're going to have. With, have you're going to get further, so you can go back in time. Okay. Is yeah, what I, I, didn't even, I didn't even consider that. Uh, Lockyer, you just saying, Paul, uh, Teddy, before 98. 98, but it says here 304 games. So I got very lucky there. Oh, yeah. That's, well, that's why I went. I, think, well, I, was, I thought it was going to be a close run thing. Green Eastwood scored a try. He only gave on the wing just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> against, so the, against the Melbourne Storm in 2006. Well, yeah, that good. It wasn't the grand final, was it? Uh, Paul, your top row. Um, I picked this guy because I went to a podcast that he was on in uh, Magic Round uh, at the Lord Alfred. Shane Webke, 0. 0.70. Uh, I also went Greg Eastwood because he came up in uh, <laughs> one of these two or three weeks ago, 18.59, and I went Adam Blair, 10.82. All right, middle row, Ted. Uh, Roosters 100 plus game, my, an old favourite of mine, uh, Fabio Goffin, Dan Mortimer, 0. 0.74. Uh, I was just really struggling with wing and back row stuff. Uh, Sia Soliola, 21.03. And 300 plus games, Roosters, Mitch Orbison, 12.54. Uh, I went the Ogre, Mark O'Mealy, 0. 0.76. I had one of my favourites who's actually a decent bloke, gave us a lift to training one day, uh, Chris Flannery, 6.2. Oh, Chris Flannery and I went to the same preschool together in Cow. We were, we were, <laughs> we were, we were mates. We were, I didn't realise this. But we, were, we, were mate, we were mates when we were three years old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 went on, one went on to represent Queensland and turned to be a great rugby league player, and the other one sitting on a podcast talking garbage with you. Mate, with you <laughs> Let's see, let's see how their careers <laughs> diverge. <laughs> and um, the last one, I went same as Teddy, Mitch Orbison, 12.54. I've got Connor Watson, 0 0.98. Uh, Brad Takarangi, 15.77. And then wow. again, playing on the old person. Anthony Milicello, 10.50. I think he was actually, that was the lowest score you could get in that bracket. Well, I was thinking of old count as well. Again, just got over the line, 302 games. I went Mitch Orbison, 1.82. Sia Soliola, 21.03. And Michael Jennings, 15.19. Last row, Ted. Uh, Code Theory Talks in the local derby out here on Sunday. Uh, Manly 100 plus games, Shane Rodney. Got a wizard for him, 0.57. Uh, started a game on both the wing and the back row. I can only think of one person here. He started a lot wing and back row. Tony Williams of T Rex, 22.47. Uh, and Manly 300 plus games. I really couldn't cop this player at all, but he played for Australia. Brent Kite, 19.14. Nice. I also, too, got a wizard. Um, the late great Feather Hill, Terry Hill. Tezza. Uh, 0 0.42. Um, once again, Teddy, with you on the back row, Tony Williams, the T Rex. Um, cannot think of anyone else. And the last one, the man that never lifted a weight but was the most ripped, 
Um, Anthony Watmo, 18.82. <laughs> I uh, had Brain, 0.71. Wolfman, David Williams. Mm. Uh, then I had T-Rex as well. And I also had Anthony Watmo, 18.82, which again was the lowest possible score in that bracket. I went Glenn Stewart, 1.20. Uh, T-Rex. I think all four of us went ding, T-Rex, 22.47. And Jared Wawara Hargraves, 28.92. All right, give us your totals, Teddy. 110. Uh, 97.2. 26. I was. I did it late last night, and I was in the top 30. Cracked the top 30. That's huge. <laughs> 120. 120.7. Oh, <laughs> it's gone from the podium to dead last. He went to the podium because there was three of us last week, wasn't it? <laughs> No, Sealy was there. Sealy was oh, last. Yeah, 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 cut it out, Diddy. Shout out, Sealy. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, yeah, and once again, Teddy, you've managed Go to um, <laughs> insert one of the great Australian hits of the 1980s into one of your articles. Shut up, your face. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hit, wasn't it? Big Joe Dolce. Big Joe Dolce. All right, we are wasting time. Um, let's have a quick look at Origin next week. Uh, Queensland dollar sixty-five to win the series. New South Wales two dollars twenty-five uh, for game one. New South Wales two dollars and two cents. Queensland a dollar eighty. Queensland have won two in a row. They've split the last three, uh, last six, three apiece. As I said earlier, we haven't seen a three-nil score since two thousand and ten. Um, Teddy, you've got some stats for us on Origin. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I do. I'll just pull up uh, a little bit here, but the key to me here is um, game ones. Queensland have just dominated game ones uh, in the last little bit. I think they've won four of the last five, and the only one they didn't win was um, was that COVID influenced one at the end of the year. So. Um, Homebush hasn't necessarily been a hugely happy hunting ground as well uh, in terms of um, New South Wales got about a 50% record there. Queensland have played pretty well there of, of, of late, and especially when you take out uh, the two dead rubbers over the last decade. I think it's an even, evenly, split, uh, evenly split game there. Um, I'll just pull up my origin stats here. Um, also be looking at I think this is a good, good, good game to be betting the total on, and I'll be looking at the under pretty heavily uh, in this one. I know the scoring went up a bit, but Brad Fittler was very much more an attacking-minded uh, coach than we're seeing here. We've got no clearing. New South Wales for mine have no points in them at all, and Queensland are, are without Munster. Um, a cause tend to be an underground at origin level. Last four in origins at the ground, 12 of telling 34 or fewer. The last 13 series openers, 11 have tied 34 or fewer, 36 and a half. That strikes me as one of the better bets in origin. So um, I'll be back in Queensland pretty confidently. So I'll be loading up and down to two. 76.5% win rate as a favourite, Queensland, since 2010. Blake, what do you reckon? Oh, look, I've already said everything I had on the teams. Um, the age difference is the one for me. It's Queensland are going to have this team for many years to come. So uh, New South Wales, it, game one's a must win. And I know it hurts hearing Teddy's stats, but if you lose in New South Wales game one, I think the series is done. Um, I, I, too, already had written down the unders, 36 and a half at a dollar ninety. I think it's a, a good thing. I think um, I don't mind... Low max as well as any time try score into the Blues one to twelve at six bucks. I just think that with that a lot of the 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 team he's picked, those backs are going to do a lot of work, and I think it's going to help the forwards. You've got Brighton Toor who breaks the most tackles in the NRL. Zach Lomax will take twenty plus carries. Suwali is a big body, and then you got the brains and just the the safeness of um, Crichton out there. So I think much like a Penrith team. 
the back five is going to do a lot of work for the the Blues and really get them in a position to score some points. But I think there's points for both teams are going to be hard to come by. But be, very close match. And I, I, like I said, I think the Blues, the way Madge has picked his team, I think he's picked a team that can do a job. And I think they'll get the job done game one. Where are you reckon, Paul? Oh, just give me Queensland. If I'm having a bit, I'm taking a little same game multi. Um, and I'm taking a couple of try scorers, and they're both wearing maroon jerseys. Uh, Xavier Coates and Reese Walsh. Um, I, I can see, I can see Queensland scoring 20 plus points in this game, and I don't see New South Wales scoring more than 10. So I'm happy to take a little bet that they're going to score a few tries out wide. Xavier Coates and Reese Walsh. A couple of other Queenslanders who can find the try line. Hammer scored in all three games last year. Scored then, five, five uh, tries in four origin games with the hammer. Yep. And uh, your man, Val Holmes, Teddy, 13 tries in 16 games. Uh, he is third all-time for origin tries scored. Most of those have come on the wing, though. Not, not, not they have got two in game two last year. Yep. Yes, he does. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll be taking Queensland as well. I'll note, kind of, we haven't gone into this, but Fords don't score a lot of tries in Origin. It's kind of a bit of a myth that Fords score tries. Like a lot of the tries are scored out wide. So, same game multis, you know, I'm always kind of big on, hey, let's try and get a prop to crash over. Yeah, I, I just, just don't see it. I just don't see it happening in Origin much. I think you're going to see a lot of centers and a lot of wingers scoring tries. So, I'm with you on where this is kind of headed. There you go, punters. Some free advice. Uh, all right, let's have a look at round 13, which will kick off uh, with the Eels, $1.72 v. the Sharks, $2.15. Blake, your Eels are two and a half point favourites. Gutherson's back. Moses is back. Uh, I Shark. presume you've got them to win here. Sharks are squeezed in. They're $2.05 now. Eels now at $1.78. Yeah, I I don't know how Parramatta lose this game. If they do, they shouldn't. They shouldn't turn up at any other game for the rest of the year, to be fair. Trent no, Barrett. famous last words, yeah. But mate, well, I'd, to be honest, like, when I tipped them at the start, he obviously you tipped them being healthy. Mitchell Moses is back, and who I think would have been actually the seven for New South Wales had he been fit, in my eyes. Um, I, I Their team's almost fully fit. You've even got a Madison who's been playing poorly, couldn't even make the 17. So I think they do this, and I'm... I think they cover the line as well. I think they could cover a lot more points than what's actually on offer. Do you have any stats? I don't, yeah, I don't have any stats. <laughs> well, here <laughs> that, the only stat that matters for mine, Trent Barrett, 12 and 47 in his last three years. Absolutely. <laughs> he is one of two coaches in the history of the game to have coached over 100 games and they have a win rate of less than 32%. Uh, it's unbelievable he's been put in the interim job. He's absolutely nuts. He had no answer. He thought Kelma Tuolagi had a good game the other night. But mm. I don't know what, what sport he was watching. Kelma Tuolagi was, was one of the worst back rows of the week last week. So, uh, missed tackle after tackle. I agree with Blake in theory this is a game that the Eagles absolutely must win. But there's absolutely no way I will take back Trent Barrett, particularly as a favourite. His last 18 games as a coach, top, top, sorry, last 19 games as a coach, top 18 points. In two games, you're gonna have to you know, you're gonna have to score more than eight in this to win the game. I think there's pl- plenty of points in this para uh, this para Sharks game. Um, and as he said, he teams off losing by forty plus uh, over the since 2008, cover at sixty percent, uh, and teams off losing forty plus after being shut out, cover at sixty three percent. So it's a nice spot for the Sharks. So uh, I just think Sharks are too mentally tough. I think they're too well coached. I think they'll win this game. You like the Eels or the Sharks, Paul? I like the Sharks. I, I do. Um, I like the fact they're coming off a, a niller. Uh, um, and and that, that'll have them wound up. Um, I know no Nico Hines. Uh, but outside of that, it's a fairly, um, I, I guess, consistent sort of lineup um, that they've got there. Uh, they've got enough guns there. I just, yeah. We, we saw the Panthers bounce back after the loss to the Wars. I think we're going to see another bounce back here. I, I'm happy to take the Sharks. I think the Eels are just slightly overrated. Um, even though they get the likes of Gutherson and 
uh, Moses back for this one. I, it's Blaze to what's wrong with him? I, surely you can find a spot for him in the back line somewhere. Um, oh, that I, I know he made it. What's that? Not our boy Trent. He gets no. playing Sean Lane in the middle. He thinks Kilmer to is the next coming of uh, Ron Coote. He thinks uh, um, Ryan Madison shouldn't be in the seven name. I, I don't know what he's saying. To allow he's got to be in that team, doesn't he? So, uh, Blaze, yeah. Lane, sorry. Yep. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Sharks here. Um, and I can understand why they've been um, squeezed in slightly since uh, their opening of around, what was it, 2.15? Anytime you can get the ladder leaders as a $2 outsider, you've got to take it, surely. Got to stop treating the Sharks like the Penrith Panthers, guys. Yeah, but the Parramatta Eels are closer to the West Tigers than they are the Penrith Panthers. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Gee, that's a double. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Uh, next one, Knights, dollar fifty-eight. Dogs, two forty. Knights mm. are four-point favourites. The Knights have won far. six of the last ten. Teddy, what do the stats say? Because I feel like the Dogs are the bit here. Well, before stats, I'm going to have my rant on the 18th man, 18th man in Origin, and why they can't go back and play club football this week. What an absolute joke that is. This is the third time it's happened with that Burton and the Bulldogs. He's not going to play. He's not in the 17, so he should be He should be playing and he can go back and sit on the bench today. Man. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it probably didn't matter so much the last couple of years because we've been in the bottom of the table. Well, this this is a pretty critical game for the Bulldogs making the eight here. Uh, I think I still think we're massive runners. I loved having Toby there. Hutchinson back, I think we're better suited to that running six role than in the organising seven role. So um, Preston's starting to kick out. Obviously, kick out is a loss, but Preston is... An undeniable talent for my life. I absolutely love what he's doing uh, in the team. And Karaz goes into the centres and Blake Wilson does a job on the wing. So I don't, I don't think we're that harshly um, harshly off in the end. Uh, the Dogs got absolutely towed by Newcastle both games last year, but one thirty six twelve only six weeks ago. Teams off a win of 20 or more, around it's 13 to 18, so they're covering that origin period, cover at 60%. The Bulldogs have covered four straight of getting a start of four or more. They've covered their last three from the 30 plus, covered four of their last five against top eight teams. Newcastle, six and 11 against the spread when favored by four more. I just don't have a lot of points in Newcastle. Mm. Uh, you, you kind of think this is good luck. Love the plus here. I think the dogs can win, but I think the plus is a really good bet. Yeah. Yeah, I think the dogs can win as well, Teddy. I, I, but in saying that, Newcastle are just a team where they're just tough. They're winning games 18 14 or 8 0 or 8 6. Like they just win Perfect. games, close games. And I, I look at their teams almost apart from Ponga is still very stacked. Um, and Bradman best, sorry, but that Armstrong's been a revelation for him. How good that, is he, been? He, How is, good is he? he has been outstanding. Um, Kai Pierce Paul has obviously got their starting position over Frizzell now, but you got Frizzell coming off the bench with Saifidi. I look, I think the Knights win this in a close one, but the start, yeah, it'd be tempting to take the dogs at the start. No, it's the form team of the comp, which is sick to say. Four and oh in the last four. <laughs> what do you like in this game, Phil? I do like the dogs plus the points. Um, look, they've got three big dogs out with Bert Brighton and Kikau gone. Um, but the forward pack still looks uh, very, very solid. Um, I, I think the two forward packs almost sort of uh, cancel each other out. Um, so if we look to the back line, uh, they'd be thankful that... Um, the Fox wasn't selected for origin because um, I, I think he's going to play a big, big part in this game. Uh, yeah. I, look, I'm, I'm slightly leaning towards the Knights, but I do like the start that the dogs are getting. One each way, you reckon. Uh, next one, Panthers, $1.35. Dragons, $3.30. I ran out of time to find any stats. So I'll throw to Teddy. What have you got in this game? Well, Panthers have got more players in Origin, but I reckon it's the Dragons who've been hurt more uh, in yep. terms of what they got. Like Edwards Toll, uh, Luai Martin Yo, and Origin Cleary out, obviously. But Ben Hunt out, replaced with Jesse Marshke, spent more time with the North Sydney Bears than playing in the Royal Football. Uh, Zach Lomax uh, is out, and they've also, he's also lost Jack Bird to injury and dropped Michaeli over Lawa. So they're pretty much rolling out an entirely new three quarter line, which is. Not great when you've got a new halfback in the team. He's probably not going to be known as a real playmaker either. So um, I don't know where their points are coming from this one. James Sewell is pretty tough, and there's a guy had some punch 
in, in their four pack, but Gloucester doesn't have any punch. So um, just a few notes here. Teams off a defensive shutout in the last four years, cover at 68%. Panthers 5 0 against the spread in that spot. They've covered 10 of their last 12 at, uh, at Penrith Stadium when favoured by less than 10. So uh, uh, the Dragons have covered the last four against the Panthers. They'll forget this time of year. So I can't say confidence is super high, but I'd much rather be a Penrith. And the money's starting to come for the Panthers as well. So um, I'll be laying the points here reasonably small, but uh, I, I don't know how you can get around this around this, um, this side and of note. The Dragons right edge defensively can see about 60% of their tries. So I'll be looking at someone like a Paul Alamotti. I think about three dollars, three fifteen on to uh, to score a try uh, out on that left wing, and, and maybe Jesse McLean. I think will play on that left because Taruva, Taruva and Todd have been switching a bit the last few weeks, so you had, had to keep an eye on that one. But I think if Taruva does play on the right, which I expect he will, I'll be looking at. I think he gets some value around Alamotti and McLean. Um, nothing, like, from he, nothing from me. He said it all. Penrith to win this. I can't see how a team wins without their heart and soul in Ben Hunt. You got Lomax, that's minus 25 carries, plus uh, Jaden Tua, who's been superb on an edge. So everything Teddy said, I agree with Panthers to win this. Same, same. Yep, tick, tick. Tick, tick. Uh, Dolphins, $1.60. Canberra Raiders, $2.35. The Dolphins are four and a half point favourites. And they have lost the hammer to Origin. Is that all? And Felice Cafusi is out of bed. Oh, Felice. Yeah. Can we talk about his haircut? Wow. Just let it go, man. Just, just shave it off. Go on, dude. It's gone, dude. Just, it's over, man. <laughs> There's no coming back from that. You tell him. Yeah, I yeah, No, thanks. Um, Teddy, stats? Uh, not a lot doing this game. Well, this guy has played twice. Uh, one of Winner Peace, Dolphins have covered both games. Um, both thrillers from memory one was in the wet Canberra just held on against the Dolphins and the, sorry Dolphins just held on against Canberra and when Foley hit the field goal one oh, I'm inclined to have the plus here with, with the Raiders just on one stat alone here when the Raiders are off conceding 40 plus they've covered 8 straight but like Ricky does not cop bad defensive performances and um, on paper are oh, I'd probably rather be on the Dolphins, but I just that stat really stood out for me. There's not a lot here. Like Dolphins have, have covered every game at, at, at Redcliffe Oval, which is which is big for them. So um totals are all over the shop. So not a huge betting game, but probably lean towards the plus. I think Canberra a chance. Yep, I'm I'm the exact same. I've gone um Raiders with the plus here. You look at the drag uh the the Dolphins, who have they really beaten this year? Not like no one. They have beaten no one. They've beaten the, the Warriors. They did. They haven't. They've beaten the Tigers twice, the Cowboys once, Manly, who are ninth, beaten Parramatta, the Titans, the Dragons. Like They haven't beaten anyone worth of note. Um, this Raiders team has. This Raiders team is tough. They're only losing a Hudson Young. I, I see many pluses for this Raiders team and not so many with the Dolphins. Um, I think it could go either way. Don't get me wrong, but I'm happy to lean towards the Raiders in this one and think they are every chance. And let's not forget, around this time is when the Dolphins started to fade last year. I know different team, but that forward pack is still ageing the same. Paul, the Dolphins? Yeah, I, I, look, I love the Dolphins. I love Wayne Bennett, but um, I have to lean the, the Raiders here. I, I love Teddy's stats. I love the fact that they that Sticky usually gets... He gets the best out of them after they've had a very, very poor defensive effort. So... Um, I'm keen to take the Raiders plus the four and a half that they're uh, offering at the moment. All right. And the last game of a shortened round, Roosters dollar thirteen, North Queensland Cowboys out to six dollars twenty. Wow. Uh big plus for the Roosters that Tedesco did not get picked for origin. They should, I would imagine, fly up the ladder uh during this period, Teddy. Yeah, uh, astonishingly, the Cowboys have more players than Origin. They've got six out for Origin. Robson Holmes, Tulangi, Dean, Cotter, and Danai against just the four from the Roosters, Swally, Crichton, Lenu, and Collins. None in the key positions there for the uh, uh, the Chooks. So they're, they're flying. I, the, my two best bets of the week coming in this game. I absolutely love the minus. The minus is off the map. Uh, and the best bet you'll 
will have all year. Cockle Castle is the over in this game. I know it's a massive number. The over is absolutely free in this one. Uh, just a stat to get you excited about the over in this one. Uh, when there's a 16 plus underdog in rounds 13 to 18, last two so the origin period, which is why that got that kind of 13 to 18 in there, over goes 73.1%. When a team is traveling in a state, 11 and 0 against the spread. Uh, the over is 11 and 0. So, uh, Cowboys can't tackle. Roosters can score points at will. The Roosters really have lost none of their tries to on power this week. Like, Swilly is out there, cares. It's going to union. Um, still with Joey Manu, still got Teddy. But they've got the, they've got everyone there. Like, now Butcher replaces Crichton on the left. Like, they've got so much depth. They are going to have absolutely no issue scoring points here. And you look at some of those Cowboys players who are into that team. Like, that is a, I just want to pull the, the, the team list up here. Like some of the players they will be wheeling out, who are going to have to stop like some money. Like you're going to have, you know, um, Braden Burns, Falami Bay, uh, like Jake Clifford and Chad Townsend might be the worst half pairing in the history of rugby league. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've got some real concerns about the Cowboys in this one. They don't travel well either. I'll just be chips in the roosters and more chips in the over. Yep. Yeah, the last four, four of the last five away games, Cowboys, no good at travelling. Well, the Roosters, four in the last five, have covered the 19. If you, we go 19 and a half, they've won by 28, 22, 20 and 42. So that's four of the last five that they've won. So very impressive. They're scoring a lot of points at the moment. And like you said, like I, I, be, I believe Jennings, he's on the bench. He will come in for Junior Ponga. I think he'd make that change after the Sharks game and what had happened um, to shore that up. And we could see anywhere... F- 50 upwards. I think $1.13 is very generous at the moment, and I think it could fly straight in, um, even come in a lot more. So, yeah, I think this could be a bloodbath. Sam? Oh, uh, 100%. I love – I don't usually like to uh, back uh, big, big, big favourites, but I cannot see – first of all, the Cowboys away from North Queensland, um, decimated by origin selections – the Roosters almost untouched uh, by war, uh, by Origin selection. They, they, they must have been planning on not being not having Teddy uh, Tedesco uh, for the Origin period. Um, that's a huge huge plus for them. That that back line will tear the uh, North Queensland Cowboys Cowboys apart. Um, I love the Roosters minus. I love the overs here. I think it's 51 and a half at the moment. If you have a look at the Roosters' last five games, they've scored 44, 30, 38, 40, and 60 points. Um, I'll be yeah, I'll be having a good old go on the overs and a good old go minus 19 and a half. Nice, very nice. All right, that will bring us to some betting. We've got 100 bucks to spend uh, each and put on whatever you want. Teddy, where is your $100 going? I want to start off with uh, $20 on a Paul Alamotti truck. Think about three fifteen at Lud- Ludbrook. So we'll assume that's the same as PLBNZ. Uh, and I am going to just play this uh, very simple. I'm just going to go with. Uh, Roosters 13 plus into the over 51 and a half, which I think is around a two dollars 81. Uh, 80 on it. Nice, Blake. Um, I've got just two multis 80 dollar multi with the eels, the panthers head to head, and the roosters minus 19 and a half. Um, and a 20 dollar multi with the raiders plus four and a half, and the knights to win one to 12. I think they'll win that in a close one against the doggies. All right. I am going to go a uh, little double dogs plus four and a half into the sharks plus one and a half at three dollars sixty eight. And I'm going to have let's put seventy dollars on that. And a four leg anytime try score multi, all roosters. And I'm just going to play the hits here. Tom Young, Daniel Tupo, James Tedeschi, Joey Manu. James, James Tedeschi. Good fella. Tedeschi. <laughs> Did I say Tedeschi, did I? Yeah. <laughs> Got the great man on my mind. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, there's going to be that many tries on offer. I could possibly sit a little wing and fall over for one of them. 
<laughs> Dom Young, Daniel Tupo, James Tedesco, and Joey Manu at seven dollars sixty-seven. I'll have my last thirty on that one. Let's just hope we don't have a Reese Walsh situation there. They mm. score hundred yeah. points on one of the big dogs misses out. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of bets this weekend. I'm going with a nice little double. Roosters minus nineteen and a half into the Raiders plus four and a half. Eighty dollars on that at three dollars and sixty one. And then if you have a look at the round thirteen specials and you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's a try score of bingo oh, yes. option that uh, has been available for a while. Uh, obviously, it's a shortened round this week, but last week, if you took the Sunday games, uh, a try score is one to seven, you collected, and I think that was paying around six fifty, seven fifty. So I'm going to have a little go this week, $20. Um, I'm just going to go across the round, all jerseys, one to 13 to score a try across the round. That's paying seven fifty. I'm putting 20 on it, try score a bingo. I love try score of Ingo, Paul. It, it's a, just every week. It's just one of the best. And seeing a big prop crash over, even if you're against them, it gives you a little something to share. <laughs> uh, we're getting promos this week. Uh, we do. I wonder if we've got any bets from Sealy. What did you not get any? Let me just. Uh, so promos, NRL. We've got the uh, three or more league same game multi. Um, basically plays a three or more league same game multi uh, on the NRL this Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So because it's a shortened round, um, all four days. And if one league fails, get up to $50 back uh, in bonus cash and you can only get one per day. Um, so Thursday to Sunday. Also the uh, oval ball uh, multi buster as well. Mega multi. Very nice. Uh, and keep an eye on that promotions page come Origin next week. Oh. Well, I know nothing. I'm just saying keep an eye oh, on okay. case. I'm just wondering if, <laughs> if, Teddy, if Teddy had got his, uh, what was it, uh, try scorer uh, um, promotion back in somehow. Well, no, no, no. What don't, was it called? Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> We're going to move on. Blake, thank you very much for having it, for joining us this week. Really appreciate your time, mate. Your insight. And your passion no worries lads thank you i've got to get on surly's uh tipping so i get uh 200 bucks next week you know you know you don't enter tips this week you get 200 bucks more <laughs> next week so well done surly teddy thank you as always yeah, thanks. Yeah. thanks thanks to everyone great uh great chatting as always the big special thanks to surly's uh tipster we'll give him uh, make the most of that 200 next week <laughs> mighty good stuff today mate Looking forward to it. Look, I always look forward to Origin. Um, it's a great, great time of the year. Uh, we, obviously, this side of the Tasman, we've got to stay up a wee bit later than yeah, Teddy yeah. does. We've got, uh, we've got over to sort there. That, out. Got to sort that, that side of the Tasman, um, I lived over there for three Origin series, Paul, and all you did was stay at the pub two hours longer. Like, we'll stay up later for two hours. <laughs> Uh, by the way, listeners, that's not true. <laughs> that's a complete fabrication. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're going to end this now. Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll be back next week to do it all again. Cheers.